All right, guys, I'm Cameron from IPD, working in the customer service department, and today we're going to go over a couple quick tips on how to do oil change successfully on a P2 car and late model P80 car, so everything about 1999 and later that uses this paper insert style oil filter. The tools we're going to use today are pretty basic. Our real basic oil filter cap wrench that we have here, part number T2489, and our oil filter that comes with our rubber seal ring for the housing. And our tool goes right on here with a 3 8 ratchet and a little short extension helps to get the thing off a little bit easier. So let's move on to it. All right, so on these cars, you'll find the oil filter on the front right. It's the plastic housing right here. And all the models that take this style oil filter will always have the filter in the same spot right there. So with our tool attached to our 3 8 ratchet and an extension, we want to slide it on here, make sure it settles all the way up there, and be wary of them being over tightened from oil chain shops. If you've done it yourself, then it should be nice and easy to get off just takes a little bit of a turn to get it started and then just keep going until it comes all the way off. Alright, so now that we've got it all the way loose, for the last little bit I like to do it by hand because this filter housing is going to be full of oil. So you want to have your pan ready and just pull the whole housing down all at once. If you notice up there, Many times the filter stays in there and doesn't come attached with the housing. That's okay. Just let it drain and then we'll just go from there as soon as it's done draining. Alright, so now we've got our housing off, we've got the filter off, and the O-ring is one of the important pieces in this. And when the thing is covered in oil like this, it's sometimes kind of hard to see. I like to use a little pick tool. You can use a small screwdriver or whatever you want to help get that thing off there. Usually what I'll do is just hook there and then the whole thing will just come right off and you can lift it off and this one is going to get thrown in the garbage and we're going to put the new one on. So that's what it's going to look like. So now we have the O-ring removed. It's never a bad idea to get things a little bit cleaner. It's always nicer to work with tidy parts and as long as you get all these threads clean it's going to make the thing a lot easier for reinstallation. It's going to get everything sealed right. So that's what it'll look like and let's put the O-ring on. Alright so all oil filters you're going to get from IPD are going to be the OEM equipment Molly filters. Inside the box you'll find this new rubber seal ring. This is very, very important if it is in the wrong spot on the housing or if it's not on there. All your oil will rapidly leave your engine. Ask me how I know. I've tried it before. <laughs> so it can be a little bit tough sometimes to see. If you look on our website, we've got great pictures that show this, but just for a little more clarification in the video, this groove right here is the one where this O-ring is going to seal on. Not down here all the way at the shoulder and not above in that bigger groove, but right here. To get this thing on, it's going to roll right in. Put it right there. I'll just follow it around, get it over the edge here, and then same thing, just roll it down so that it's nice and seated right there in that ring. So one of the real common questions we get is why is the hole in the new oil filter smaller than the hole in the old oil filter? Once these have been installed in the car, it's a friction fit. So when it's installed, that hole is going to open up and as time goes by and as it gets oil soaked, it's going to stretch out. Now notice this is the Molly brand OEM filter and this is our new one, which is also Molly brand OEM filter. See how much smaller that hole is? It can be quite confusing when you look at them out of the box. Rest assured, they're exactly the same and it's meant to be this way. All right, so another quick trick that is another thing that comes up quite frequently is related to that note that we just made about the hole in the center being smaller. As it goes into the filter housing, it's not going to want to go all the way down right away. The trick here is to grab it, push down on it, sometimes it takes a little bit, and you hear that click, that's how you know it's all the way in there. You still have a little bit of wiggle room, and that's how it's supposed to be, but if you try to pull it out, you'll notice that it is positively engaged appropriately on the bottom. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. So now that we have our filter in our housing, we're ready to put it back into the car. Now just like before with the housing, it's always a good idea to take a rag and get it nice and clean in here. Anytime you can get a clean mating surface, you're going to get a better seal. And, as they say, cleanliness is next to godliness, so might as well do it. So, now that we've got this in here, let's take this. We'll just line it up there and just thread it in by hand at first. No reason to put the tool on it right now. And if you watch, if you can peek under here real quick, you can see where that rubber seal ring is. Be careful as you thread this in to watch that. If it gets pinched or grabbed somewhere, sometimes that could compromise the seal. Now once we're here and we're about hand tight, I'll go ahead and grab my ratchet and our tool. And we're going to go same thing as we did before, but now obviously we're putting it on. So as before, seat it on there. And it does not take a whole lot of effort here. And it's very important to go slow here. If you go too fast, again, that seal might pinch. Doesn't take a whole lot here. So just get it on there and then notice for it to catch and just really do be careful not to refund it. If you over tighten it, you're likely to break it. 
So notice here is where it kind of stops. From here, we only need to give it just a little more oomph, and that's really it. So sometimes the tool sticks a little bit on these guys. You have to give them a little bit of a tap to come off, but now we're done. So thanks for watching. That's just a quick tech tip that hopefully gives you guys a little bit of help when you're taking care of this job, especially if you've never done it before. Small errors can make a big difference, so pay attention to the details and you'll do just fine.